Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am Matthew Hardman, the G-Shock Watcher, and on today's episode, we're going to take a look at some of the new Gravity Masters that are coming out. We're going to look at Hydro Modding, which is something I haven't seen before, and check out some interesting deals on the Bayou website. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. Thank you for coming past the channel today, uh, checking out some G-Shocks. I find that are very, very interesting right now. Um, before we jump into Bayi, I just want to touch on some of the watches which are coming out to market. One of them that I am particularly excited about is this particular watch, the Gravity Master. Uh, this has come out just this month. Uh, there are three variants of this particular watch. Now, the Gravity Master is a new, but three variants. There's kind of like a black with a subtle red. There's a black with a bit of orange, and there's a gray with a blue streak. And from what I understand, based on reading some of the reviews, and there are quite a number of very positive reviews on this particular watch, is that the different colors themselves are inspired by different types of Airline craft, airline craft, aircraft, I guess. Um, the one on the left is kind of like your most general one, this sort of black one. This one, from what I understand, is more around uh, daytime operations and helicopters, the, uh, the sort of orange and black. And this one here, the gray on the blue, is more around the uh, fighter jets. And this one, I think, is probably the nicest looking. It's certainly much more striking than the other ones. I mean, the other ones aren't terrible. They're nice watches. But that blue on gray, I think, just looks really, really spectacular. It's a really, really nice looking watch. Now, they say this Gravity Master series isn't anything new. Gravity Masters have been around for a long time. But I feel what they're going for with this particular line is something much more affordable. Like these are still in your Master of G series. And the Master of G series can somewhat get into the sort of 600s and 800s from a Singapore dollar point of view. Um, these ones are around about 439, about 230 pounds, if I remember from the uh, the articles I read. What's interesting is they still retain tough solar. They still have the carbon core feature. They actually have an interesting feature, which is a, a flight uh, tracking mode. So you can go ahead and actually click and you'll get your GPS coordinates and your, your flight information. But this doesn't necessarily have all of the sensors that previous ones actually have. So these, these watches, if you have a look at, or if we check out shock base, and you know carbon core guard, water resistance, you've got multiple time zones, Bluetooth and tough solar, but it doesn't have all of the different uh, sensors that previous ones have. If I look at the previous ones, this is a GRB300, if we look at the GRB200, we can see there's a lot more sensors. In fact, they call this one the quad sensor. The Mudmasters, if I remember rightly, these ones are typically triple sensor. Now, a quad center sensor is triple sensor plus something else. And so you've got your altimeter, barometer, compass, and thermometer, which is really how they sort of bundle up the, the triple sensor. And then adding in the uh, step tracker, that is the fourth part of the quad sensor. So in comparison to our B300, you're not getting all of those different features. And you might ask, is that a, a game ender, a blocker? I don't know. I mean, the watch itself looks good, right? This blue on gray looks super cool. I think it's a great looking watch. Do I use the barometer altimeter, all those different things. I was testing a range man just two weeks ago in Perth. I went hot air ballooning. I tested the altimeter. I went out onto the ocean. I tested the barometer and numbers came up. I don't necessarily know if it changed my life, if I had it or not. It was really a watch I could tell the time and looked good. And I think looking at this particular watch, the Gravity Master, the GRB300, it's a watch that looks good, right? It's got a very clear analog display, you'll see there's no digital here. So no positive digital, no negative digital, just no digital. But it's got tough solar, it's got Bluetooth, it's got multiple time zones. 
do you need anything more out of a, a rock solid watch? And like I said, these watches themselves, you know, if you look at them, they look good. All three actually look really good. If you wanted to go for something understated, you can go for this. This one's a little bit more racier. I kind of like the striking mode of the, the gray one. But yeah, it's, a, it's an incredible watch. Uh, so something worth picking up, uh, especially with a trip to Japan coming up for myself for work. I might have to go and have a look at that one. So that's, that's kind of cool. The other thing which I thought was interesting this week as I was working on some of my mods is this. And somebody in the, the comments said to me, hey, have you actually ever considered doing a hydro mod? And rather than sort of say yes or no, I didn't know what a hydro mod was. So I went up and, and had a look at it. And essentially, a hydro mod is essentially immersing your entire watch, the module inside, in some form of liquid. And some people have sort of said silicon. Um, some other people use different things. But I found this really intriguing. I was trying to work out what is the reason for going ahead and actually doing this. And what people said was it enhanced the legibility of the watches, especially with these different uh, digital displays. So this particular person, what they did was they, they unseated the module from the actual watch. This is a digital square. They unseated the module and they started to fill it up with this silicon oil. And so through the silicon oil, they squeeze out all the bubbles. They start to reseat the module, fill it up again, seal it off, and then start to utilize the watch. And so here you can actually see the results. So on the left-hand side, this is a watch which has been hydro-modded. And on the right-hand side, this hasn't been hydro-modded. So you can see that it's certainly a little bit more clearer. Now, again, modding is not a simple thing. Believe me, I've tried to fix the uh, the, the G-Shock Tide, which I actually had. Um, I still can't get the rings back into the, the, the buttons. I'm trying to get larger ones to see if that will actually do a better job. Um, modding is not simple. And certainly going through and unseating the module and filling it up with liquid is an interesting thing, which yes, I definitely want to go try. But the pictures, I mean, look, it's not scientific pictures, but it does look as if it does improve the legibility. They've got a few different examples here. So if you go down, this one looks pretty clear. Uh, these two, so the one on the left hasn't been modded. The one on the right has been modded with the, uh, the silicon mod uh, or hydro mod. So it's an interesting interesting uh, a modification can be done. Of course, a lot of people ask then, does it impact the tough solar? Does it impact any of the sounds? There hasn't been too much in terms of answers. Most people tend to think that the tough solar part still works okay. So it could be an interesting thing to try, but I'll probably want to need to try and find a couple of cheaper digital squares to, uh, to test this out on and see what we could go ahead and actually do. Because certainly my last digital square attempt was a little bit off. Anyway, let's go and take a look at some of the watches that uh, have come across in uh, Bai. Now, one which we should probably start with is, again, one that started to be discussed in the comments of, of some of the, the videos uh, because I said not to go buy it. Uh, it was overpriced on the secondhand market. Um, but guess what? You just can't even get these watches anymore. And they are your B2100s, but it's the manga editions. So if I go and close up my news, let's go down to the watches. We'll start at the bottom and work our way up. Um, but these, here we go. This is this is one of the actual uh, watches here, or two of the watches is the white and the blue. These are the two manga editions of the BA 2100s. I think that'd be a, it's a GA 2100. So it hasn't got Bluetooth. Okay. So it's a standard uh, watch. Doesn't even have tough solar. So analog battery, but the price of these guys is kind of getting crazy. So for two, a white and a blue, which apparently is very, very hard to get. In fact, even if I go to the Casio site, in Singapore, it's basically notify me, in-store stocks, uh, out of stock. 
You just can't seem to get them right now. If you try to pick up this one, uh, auction remaining in six hours, zero bids, but they're asking for 93,000 yen for two watches. Now, this particular watch typically is 25,000 yen. So it's almost double the price for each of those different watches. So you'd really have to want this watch to really go ahead and actually bid these prices or you wait till they come back into stock. But as somebody said in Germany, they were not restocking them. They were fairly limited. So I had a look on Bayi for some of the other uh, listings. There were a lot more listings before than there are now. I only sort of got about two or three different listings and maybe the search criteria may not be quite right. But here's another one, the white one. This is at 60,000 yens. This is twice and a bit more than the actual retail price for the white one. And this one here, again, 61,000 yen. Sorry, I should probably show you. Look, 61,000 yen and, uh, and 60,000 yen. Both these watches are more than twice what they usually cost in retail. So obviously, the secondhand market or the reseller market recognizes that these watches are a lot harder to get. And it's kind of interesting because you look at some of the watch prices that actually happen. There's the um, very aspirational watches at the higher end of the market, the ones that are at the $10,000 G-Shock ones. Um, and they're nice watches, don't get me wrong. Some of those MRGs, the Frogman MRGs, they're absolutely stunning. I'd love to be able to buy them one day. I know they're expensive. But the prices that they are selling those watches for aren't exactly terrible in terms of what the retail price was. These guys, these guys are shipping them at more than twice the actual cost of those particular watches. So, you know, it is a reseller's market for this particular brand of watches right now, which is a shame because some people really like them and they want to have them. And I think they do look very clever in terms, excuse me, in terms of how to actually design them. It does look like a very manga view. Like at first when I saw it, I thought it was a drawing, but then I realized it actually is the watch itself. So very clever in the actual design of these particular watches to get that that sort of effect. But, you know, at that sort of price, again, you would really want to have that particular watch. Anyway, some of the other ones I saw this week, we're not going to go super expensive this week. In fact, some of these watches, I will say, will probably uh, end their auction before we get the video produced, but I'll try and do it quickly if you're waiting to get some guidance or, or identify some interesting watches. But um, some interesting ones which we have found uh, this particular week. Uh, this one, a G-Shock Rui Hachimura. I'm sure I am butchering the actual name. Very interesting uh, watch, lots and lots of colors. This was a collaboration model. Um, the cost of this one's 53,000 yen. The actual price when it came out was around about 47,000 yen. So it's actually higher on the resale market, but again, probably because it is a special edition watch and probably a little bit harder to go ahead and actually get. Uh, it's, it's interesting. It's lots of colors and I get excited about colors. Uh, would I buy it? Mm. Maybe not. I don't like this particular design and maybe it's a little bit too garish and that's weird for me to say something is a little bit too garish. But yeah, I don't think it's something I'd be going after. This second one here, this one caught my eye uh, simply again because of the striking colors. Again, I'm obviously on a color kick right now, but this particular one was really leveraging all of the bold colors from, uh, from G-Shock, the reds, the whites, the blacks. Uh, 12,000 yen. You can buy it out for 13,000 yen. The actual retail price when it came out was 25,000 yen. So if it strikes your fancy, it's a tough solar, multi-band six. Uh, not a bad little watch at potentially or pretty much half the price of what it came out. When did it actually come out? It was in 2019. So it's about a five-year-old watch. But again, tough solar, keeps on going. Nice, uh, nice, interesting watch, which you can go ahead and grab. It's not too bad. This was interesting. If you have a fondness for Rubik's Cubes, Rubik, Rubik Cubes. Um, I could never get it to, to work out, but this is a Rubik-designed cube watch. 
which came out. Uh, only nine hours left, so I've got to try and edit quickly. $23, 2,600 yen. Now, this released at 20,000 yen. So that's, what, 80, 90% off the original cost uh, from 2022. No tough solar, no real features. It's really a look watch. You know, so you've got the, the Rubik's Cube on the front. You've got different colors on the actual labeling. Um, the band has a bit of a, a flair to it as well. So... You know, it's an interesting sort of watch. Uh, again, if you really were passionate about the Rubik Cube, then why not? It's a nice, interesting collaboration watch, which you could go after from that point. Uh, next watch. These are interesting. I kind of like uh, sea ocean animals, uh, big fishes. And I know this is a picture of a whale, which is not a fish, but I just spent some time in Perth swimming with the world's biggest fish, the whale shark, uh, where I was testing out the range man in the ocean. Um, incredible, incredible experience seeing these things. And we've got some G-Shocks here, the dolphin and the whale model. In fact, we've got a couple of sea-based themed models here. So uh, this one is a digital square, uh, kind of nice looking watch. Uh, and what, what I like about it, every time I look at digital squares, I'm looking at the color combinations and thinking, okay, if I were to mod this, what would look good? And if you think about this one, it almost has a Stormtrooper-esque vibe. I'm a Star Wars guy. I kind of like what Star Wars does. And this one is an interesting, interesting watch. And so if you have a look at it, you've got that interesting sort of white on black it's a positive display which we love positive displays because it's so much more legible um and you know what you probably wouldn't want to go mod this i mean it's an interesting uh watch which has beautiful colorations on it i kind of dig this one now this watch came out at twenty three thousand yen it's going for now 34,000 yen. So again, another example of the lower price ones being higher priced. But I would say this one itself is probably a little bit harder to get. You know, when I go through uh, places like Japan and, and look at different G-Shocks at Big Camera and things like that, you don't necessarily see these particular watches. So it is unique, this Dolphin watch. So not too bad. What was interesting was as I was having a look at this and I was doing the search, there's two different variants of the same watch. There's another one, which is an inverted display, a negative display. Again, I kind of like the colors of this one. This is orange on the black. Again, this would look very cool modded. Like I could take this watch and do a nice, <coughs> excuse me, a nice modification on this particular watch. The other one, I wouldn't mod. I'd probably keep it just as is. I think it looks really, really nice. But that orange and black, I would love to get a crack at that and see what we could actually do with a nice uh, uh, titanium, well, so-called titanium band from AliExpress. It would be actually pretty cool. All right. Keeping with our ocean theme, here's another one. Love the sea and earth. Another digital square. Positive Display, multi-band six, tough solar, same sort of range, this ICRC uh, uh, branding. Again, very, very nice watch. This one at 23,500 yen at a buyout price. The actual cost of that watch when it came out was 26,000. So you get this cheaper than it actually was, but then shipping. And this came as a series of three. So if we have a look at it, you've got... This is a digital square. We've got a GA2100. I think that's Bluetooth on it, so it'd be a GAB2100. And then we've got a Frogman, uh, which looks kind of nice as well. So you've got a multitude of different versions of this particular watch. So this watch at Bai, you could go ahead and actually grab it, and it's still sealed up. You know, it's a good price. Uh, you could pick this up for less than what the retail price actually is is um now but i did sort of go ahead and actually find there was the gab 2100 version as well now what's interesting is i would have thought 
this would be more expensive. This one's actually currently at 14,000 yen. There is one more day left on the bids. So the bids will go up, no doubt, right? But kind of nice to be able to see this GAB2100. Interesting colors, right? So you've got a little bit of the yellow on there. You've got a positive display. Again, we love positive displays. Um, and this is under that whale and dolphin. Now, this particular guy sold at 27,500. It's currently at 14,000, so about 10,000 yen. So compared to that other one, 26,000 yen, 27,000 yen. Okay, price is not too dissimilar, uh, a bit more similar. But, you know, this one's up there already, right? This is already asking for a, uh, a higher price. Um, but, you know, if you wanted to get that one, that could also work for you as well. So the this one then has tough solar, Bluetooth, uh, not multi-band, but you can sync it up with the Bluetooth app on your phone. So it works out pretty well as, as well. So this is the Earth 2023. I'm guessing the other one must be the same. Yeah, Earth 2023. So you know what? If you were hunting for the series, you could basically knock off two out of the three straight away. So that's an, that's an option, I guess. So that's kind of cool. All right, getting out of the ocean uh coming up to the last couple of watches here's a g-steel now g-steels aren't necessarily super exciting or interesting i did pick up uh, a g-steel a while ago which was a wildlife promising watch which had the um python skin texture on it um it's kind of cool there is a mtg version of that watch which i'd love to be able to go ahead and grab but that's a lot harder to go and find but you know, I've got a, a G-Steel version of it. It's kind of cute. It's got all of the features about Tough Soul and things like that. Here's another G-Steel, which I came across uh, this week. And what struck me was it kind of has a bit of that sort of green army military vibes. Now, obviously, your your mudmans and rangemans and thing like, things like that are much more built for the military guys. You see them using digital squares and things like that. But the the colors on this watch is kind of nice, you know, so you've got your sort of the greens. You can actually see this, this bit of a, a cap, camo flare to it, the green inlays. Uh, if we go to and have a look at this on uh, on shock base, you know, you can tell it's got that sort of feel of that, that camo, that green. The gold maybe stands out a little bit more, but not a bad looking watch. The green with the bit of the bronze, it's kind of cool. Like it's an interesting watch. Side view, you can sort of see the green sort of going over there. It's definitely got a camo bracelet, and it would actually look like it fits pretty comfortably on the uh, on the arm. The highlights on the red arms. Not a bad watch. Now this one came out at ninety one thousand yen, and the price this is going for right now is at sixteen thousand yen, zero bits. I'm not saying that I might potentially want to get in trouble for this one. It's kind of cool. I haven't seen it before. Uh, it's just a G-Steel, but that coloration looks kind of interesting. Uh, so I'd be happy having that in the collection. So maybe I'll have to go and consider maybe purchasing that one as well. Um, that's it, guys. Uh, I was about to say last one, and that was going back to our uh, our manga watches. So... So there you have it. I think it's some very, very cool watches that we, we had a look at uh, this week. So we've got that green G-Steel. We've got a couple of these whale and dolphin watches, which if you're a sea-based person and you love animals, they're kind of cool to go ahead and actually look at. Um, the Rubik's Cube, the bold red and black, and of course that uh, Ri Hachimura, Hachimura watch. Not my kind of style, but uh, an interesting watch all the same. So um, I hope that was uh, fun to have a look at some of the different watches. I'll post the links into those watches down below in the uh, in the description. Um, I still need to come back and finish off that that mod. I'm kind of getting very frustrated with it to try and get the, uh, the, the buttons back onto the watch. Probably the worst decision I had to go ahead and actually do either. I don't have the patience or the right size rings, but I've got a whole range of different rings coming from AliExpress, and I still owe 
a video which is the Rangeman retrospective. I really enjoyed wearing that Rangeman, the black and yellow Rangeman in Australia. I wore it every day. I thought it looked good. It performed really well. Uh, very comfortable, all day wearing. Great, great, great watch. Um, makes me want to consider that other Rangeman, which is that digital one. But that Rangeman, which I had, uh, is very, very cool. So we will get onto that one uh, ASAP. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me and having a look at some of the news around G-Shock and some of the watches to find on Bai. I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks for joining me.